senyuri nita ako mal dinalaktifita talaga. We will be switching between Maltese and English. I'll, I'll be making my introduction in Maltese. Richard will, will speak in English and will try to cater for all of you here in the audience. Nil ako o grazi li il aitoriste di Natana al dina etnedia tal Malta bas archives taht il kappa tal project memoria. Sam il bedu tal project li teja kienet illi nifukaw fu temi differenti u bħalissa et nahdu fu diversity. Il project generali u al project memoria u al project tal apnifi nazjonali taht tal project un bat em diversity emi u al kol tema għanna grup tanis li edi jahdu fu tikit tema. Bħala temi taje pinsem u l- Il-temi principali li fuddejna na kunu fuħo għanna tema dwar il-relazzjoni bej Malta u l-Ampeduza tema uħra dwar il-nisa fil-soċjeta esperienza ta' barrani dwar Malta il-tini għarra dinija l-amministrazzjoni publika u għanna tema uħra interessante għafna dwar il-da ta' għnib Konna kultant fortunati imma dejja maħli li għal diversi t-tema isibna nis u persuni esperti u appassjonati biex tawna palata fil-ħidma ta' izda jek konna xxor di jenitna fil-tere u rasgur li jenitna fil-qasam ta' s-sudġet da' għanit kelmu dwar u l-lejla għal mod ta' basa għarqajf għalix il-persuna għalix għal s-sibna zgu persuna li appassjonata u illu mil-ġurnata ija u kol esperta fu dina il-linja Kirem li xiju uħra ta' kif għani kollaboraw għani xaħmu fija mententi ta' governativa l-arkivi nazjonali għa taħt il-Ministeru tal-Edukazzjoni pero unfa t-settu fej jinsab il-dokumentazzjoni fej jinsab ul-files kolla u għa unfa t-il-Ministeru ta' trasport, infrastruttura u proġetti kapitali għalura poġġejna flimkien il-zewġ ministeri u niġti għawnek millaw il-ringrazzja l-zewġ segretari permanenti il-sur Christopher Kutajja minna għata l-Ministeru ta' Transport u Dr. Frank Fabri minna għata l-Ministeru ta' għata l-Edukazzjoni illi la għawna il-tajna moħħum kem jiena kem Richard Stedin u daw minna għu għal-saħu soluzzjoni logistika li għuġdej għad kundaq stand faċ li fiċċiri bix permess ta' kontrat ta' għanna għana li Richard Stedin għal bix jiffaċili ta' l-skopu għal jiffaċili ta' muġt li jammet il-xor kollu u di l-aktifita tal-lej li jabropi u parti min dina il-kollaborazzjoni. Għala għna sena min il-kollaborazzjoni u l-u medin il-ċelebraw il-pizbiet sa' issa u u koll il-nietu formalment dana il-Bolta Bas Arkaif fiħdan il-proġett memoria ta' l-arkivi nazjonal. Izda sabiex jie taktad għan il-proġett, il-ħidma u l-emozjonijiet li dal proġett jati għanqal nistiden propi l-istoriċi l-stedi għalli għamil il-prezentazzjoni tijo għanna prezentazzjoni ta' madwar 20-25 minuta dwar x-sar sissa min meta beda l-proġett sal ġurnata tal-lu u bat namlu il-konkluzjoni għara nistidnu konti bħawana u għolla l-fti drink su t-kontru t-diskutu dana il-suġet Richard, I invite you to do your presentation then I'll do the closing remarks of the Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this stand out of the way for a moment. Although it does make it now look as though I'm about to do a song, so I promise not to sit. Right, okay. something called string theory. 
I've got something similar, it's called jigsaw theory, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that to begin with. Um, this job is really like trying to sort of do three jigsaw puzzles at the same time, where all the pieces are mixed together, you don't know what any of the pictures are, and all you can do is sort of take individual pieces, hopefully sort of start to um, slot them together, and slowly picture appears. So what I'm going to do is take you through an example of this. Um, I was uh, sent this image back in the summer by um, Stuart Bella. It has been used in the um, old Motors Club newsletter about 10 years ago. Um, all Stuart knew was um, supposedly it was a Daimler, um, but he uh, wondered what I could tell him. Well, initially two things grabbed from my attention. Um, the name of the sign wasn't one that I'd come across before. The modern motor company, uh, Foster. Um, sadly, it's one I've still not come across other than in this photograph, but um, it's something I shall uh, see what we can find out more about as time progresses. The other thing I noticed is that the, uh, the radiator and wheels of the bus um, certainly were a daylight. And you can normally sort of believe very early buses by looking at the, the spokes on the wheels and the, the radiator, you can tell what they are. <coughs> so I emailed a copy to my good friend Terry Partridge back in the UK, who's really, really good at tracking down um, what the makes of old vehicles are. Um, and initially he drew a bit of a blank. In fact, he came back to me and said that the wheels were good over the whole floor. We wondered if we'd got a really early example of all these bits of us that have been made from bits of this and bits of that. Um, but after a couple more hours of work, um, he came back with a possibility. Napier. And if we look at this uh, photograph we found, um, we've got the same wheels, um, there's the black square above the radiator with the name Napier, uh, which if I just go back, you can sort of see uh, just there. So we've got a fairly good idea of the fact that we now know what the main bus was. Now the name Nate here rang a bit of a bell with me. Um, in the sort of late part of 1941, early 42, there was a huge need for additional uh, trucks and vans over here, and a lot of long withdrawn buses um, were resurrected and put into use. I've been going through a number of the old files of Transport Water and I remembered that I'd come across two that were Napiers. Uh, one had formerly been 145 and the other one 207. Now the number 145 also rang a bell because looking through my research notes, I got a note about the vehicle that replaced the Napier, which was a Chevrolet. And that was noted as operating between Mostar and Valletta in 1929. At this point, I started going click with the jigsaw puzzle pieces because, obviously, the photograph mentioned Mostar on the side, and if you sort of really sort of squint um, with a little bit of sort of, um, sort of luck and things, I think you can just about see a number five there where the registration plate should be. <coughs> So I thought to myself, okay, not 100% certain, but I think we've probably got bus 145. Now the National Archives here also holds um, a number of um, what are called commissioners and occurrence books from Malta Police. Um, not all of the areas are here at the moment, but probably around about half the island um, is covered. Um, and a quick look through sort of the research I've done through those so far, I found a 1924 um, entry for bus 145, and it includes here we've got the name and uh, address of the driver, and lo and behold, he lives in Moster. Um, just as a matter of interest, he was uh, fined two shillings and sixpence for failing to display the vehicle's license as per the regulations at the time. These accounts books are full of what today would be really sort of quite minor um, 
you know, sort of infringements of the rules and things. Um, but um, they're absolutely vital in the, um, in the research I've been doing um, because it's a case of vehicle records before about 1931 don't exist. So they have to look at other sources of information for these really early buses. And I've now got over two and a half thousand um, mentions of buses between about 1905 and 1930 out of um, these police and college books. And again, I've, I've barely scratched the surface with these at the moment. Um, so, putting all these pieces together, we've probably got a photograph of a Navy bus that was registered 145. Would have been new in the early 20s. Um, a lot of these sort of early chassis and things were uh, World War I military noise. Um, it was replaced in 1928, stored until October 1941 when it was resurrected. Uh, fitted with a Ford engine and uh, it became a van. What's interesting is the fact that actually it remained in use as a van until 1960. A lot of these were sort of wartime conversions, emergency conversions things barely saw out um, the, uh, um, the life of the Second World War. Um, now what is also good is, quite often in these photographs, the guy stood by the cab, he's either the driver or the owner, in most cases, you know, same thing. So therefore, from the entry in the Police of Collins book, there's an extremely good chance this is Angelo uh, Chicluna, of Mostar, who was 28 in 1924. Um, and if we sort of add a couple more uh, pieces to the jigsaw, the Shikluna family in Mostar, um, certainly by the 1930s, um, Joseph was the main importer of Rayo uh, truck and bus chassis. And the company that he set up still exists in Mostar today. Um, as a uh, shop providing um, bearings and uh, a few other sort of automotive type uh, parts and things. Um, so one of the things I shall do is contact them and see if they've actually got any um, records going back to um, Joseph in the, in the 1930s. Certainly his name is cropping up an awful lot in the um, paperwork from the 1930s in the vehicle files. So it's amazing how from just one photograph and then pulling together information from um, all these other sources, um, we've been able to pull up a, uh, a comprehensive story about this particular old bus. So the other thing I just want to quickly cover is about the uh, Memoria uh, interviews. Um, what we are doing is um, Memoria's a wider project um, interviewing people from uh, different industries and things, recording their, um, recording their uh, memories and things. Um, and what we've done is um, we're doing interviews uh, with retired uh, bus people as well. Um, we've only recently sort of started that. Um, uh, we've got three interviews done so far, but we've got a lot more uh, in the process of being done. Um, and I'm just going to take you through um, a little bit quickly of the process and then at the end of this we've got a, um, about a two minute clip of uh, the first person that we interviewed. So the oral history process, if we go and we identify people who have got a story to tell and most importantly are willing to talk. We don't want to force anybody um, into, into doing this process. Um, so the first thing we do is try and get some answers basic question, what part of the industry did they work in? Were they conductors, drivers, owners, bus builders, importers, anything like that? Um, what period? Um, we've got a series of about 150 questions on our, on our list, but no one person would have all of those questions. So for example, if they um, if they were still working in the industry when um, Arriva took over, there are some questions that we can ask them about that. If they retired in, say, the 1980s, then they would ask them questions Finding out also um, you know, sort of what they uh, remember, 
and do they have any photographs, documents, or other items of interest? Because it's amazing what people have got. You know, even just one photograph can be really, really important in, um, again, you know, sort of vital piece of jigsaw coming together. Um, for some, we just sort of make some detailed notes, but for, for most other people, um, we uh, sort of start to go through the interview process. So for potential interviewees, we go along and do a, a pre-interview meeting, which is basically talking them through some of the questions uh, that we're going to ask, so that basically nothing's too much of a, a surprise to them. Again, it also helps us to target which questions of our, our big long list we're going to uh, going to ask them. And then we carry out the interview, or in some cases, several interviews, if people have been in the industry a very long time, have got a lot of very interesting stories to tell, rather than sort of try and interview them for you know a couple of hours and getting tired and fed up bits and pieces, it's much better to sort of do a couple of interviews of shorter length uh, and get the get the entire story uh, down. So then the post-interview process, um, we need to um, transcribe the interviews. Um, extra step for me is that they need to be translated into English. Um, we do all the interviews in Maltese so that the conversation will flow uh, more naturally. It doesn't matter over here how good somebody's English is. Maltese is their natural language and they're going to be far more comfortable speaking in Maltese. Also, at the end of the day, we want to try and capture any sort of phrases or terminology which is unique to the industry. Um, so, as I don't speak Maltese, um, James has been helping out um, very kindly during the first couple of interviews, um, but um, Paul has volunteered um, to um, basically be our main interviewer um, going forwards. Um, he's just undergoing some training at the moment. That. Um, but it means the fact that we can then, um, the aim is to try and do at least two new interviews a month, more if we can, but obviously we need to sort of um, work with sort of availability of bits and pieces. Um, so once interviews have been sort of translated, we then also um, follow up where necessary with further questions. So once I know exactly what's been discussed, be that something has come up that we knew nothing about and you know it's worth going back to that person to ask them a few more questions on, on that particular um, topic. And then we document and deposit any material donated uh, with the interview. So the oral history process, we're um, following one of the strict um, process as uh, prescribed by our friendly expert, uh, John at the University. Um, he is probably, um, he's hiding at the back there now, looking rather embarrassed. Um, but he's um, probably the, uh, the best expert we've got on the island on the whole process, so we've been uh, following his guidance quite carefully. Um, the transcription process also has to follow quite some strict rules to make sure that it's all done in a, in a proper way. Um, some interviews we're actually uh, recording as video. Um, for those who don't wish to appear on camera, we can obviously just do it as an um, audio only interview. And I've mentioned about how the fact that we've, um, we've got uh, about 150 questions. We are including questions on sort of social, uh, social and family backgrounds as well. Um, partly because it's a case that we want to sort of try and build up a picture of you know sort of how people sort of got into the industry and you know sort of um, you know sort of how uh, if, if a pattern of picture can be built up um, based on um, you know sort of people's uh, background and, and upbringing and things. Um, and so we're also collecting, copying, and scanning photographs and other items of interest such as things like bus tickets. Um, here's a few examples of some of the other things that we've, we've got. Um, this uh, marvellous uh, photograph was found in a police file, and it's one of a series of four photographs which show the drivers and conductors summer and winter uniforms. Uh, these photographs went to the local police stations, 
and one of the um, jobs of the uh, local police was to make sure the fact that the drivers and conductors were wearing their uniforms as prescribed. And they had photographs to know what the uniform should look like. Um, I get the impression not too many people necessarily looked quite as, you know, sort of spick and span as that, but uh, people could be fined for not wearing, for example, the uh, uniform cap. Um, and the fines got higher for repeat offenders. Um, we've got uh, a picture here of one of the um, police buses. Um, it's a Thames bus, basically, you know, just pretty much uh, along the same lines as some of the route buses, um, but a shorter one. And the police had uh, four of these from the 1950s up to the 1970s. Um, we've got um, information out of the Times of Malta. The Times of Malta have got um, uh, PDF archived copies of their newspapers going all the way back to the early 1930s. So I've taken out a subscription uh, for access to that and um, found a lot of information in their uh, newspapers. Um, we've got um, this rather interesting um, Diagram which came out of the 1905 file, which you can actually see in the uh, display case back there, um, which um, shows you one of the very early uh, 1905 Thornycroft double debtors. Um, there's all sorts of information in the Thornycroft records back in the UK, but what there isn't are the dimensions of the bus. And what we've got here is a 7 foot width and an 11 foot 6. So we now know the dimensions of these very early buses, which we didn't know before. So if that information had um, existed in this early government correspondence file, um, we'd, have, uh, we'd have lost that. Um, some of the paperwork that comes out of these files, there's some absolutely marvellous old sort of letterhead um, paper and bits and pieces. And obviously for the really early things, um, you know, we rely on, um, you know, sort of early photographs. Very lucky that here in Malta, especially in the early 20th century, there were a number of photographers um, taking good quality photographs. And probably the best known um, was uh, Richard Ellis. Uh, and without um, a number of these um, photographs, <coughs> we would know an awful lot less um, than we do today. So, um, before we have a quick look at the, the clip, um, this is the point where I um, make a plea. Um, we are looking for some volunteers, please. Um, obviously, uh, Paul has um, volunteered to help with the interview. Um, Johan's um, agreed to help a little bit, doing some of the translation uh, from Maltese into English for me. Um, but we're looking for people who can, um, you know, just donate um, a couple of hours a week. Can be evenings, weekends. Um, a lot of the work can be done from home. And it includes things like cross-checking of information helping to build the, uh, the master record, kind of think of it as sort of um, catalogue and jigsaw puzzle pieces. Um, but um, there are obviously a lot of records here at the National Archives, and if anybody fancies joining me in um, trawling through um, those, um, you're more than welcome to uh, come along. Um, also, a lot of you know other people who have worked in the industry, so if you know of somebody who um, you think would be worth us talking to and possibly interviewing, again, please let us know. Um, if there's a particular sort of topic or area of the bus industry, past or present, that you're um, interested in, again, please let us know. And we mustn't forget that there's more than one island um, in this nation, and we must not forget Gozo, and that's one of the things that I should be working on over the next couple of months, is making sure the fact that um, we, um, we start to uh, talk to people on so, right, what we will now do is show you this short clip. Um, for my fellow Brits um, here, I'm afraid it is all in Maltese, um, so you'll have to bear with me, um, but we will eventually have a translation for you, which is not tonight. So, bear with me one moment. Before we start, just to explain who this is, um, this is Consiglio, 
Hugo Mamo uh, Halls, uh, father. He was the first person that we, um, that we interviewed, um, and the setting is um, the closest thing that um, Walter has at the moment to a transport artifact uh, museum, better known as Paul's Garage. So let me hit play on this. Pretend that we are experts in the topic, 
all of you over here are the experts, and your help is more than appreciated. Um, so now I'm closing with uh, a couple of, of, of thanks for those who, who helped us. Uh, I'd like to thank the Secretary Permanente, Dr. Frank Faber from the Ministry of Education, Mr. Chris Kutayer uh, from the Ministry of Transport and Infrastructure, the Project of Capital, and the Ministry of the Ministry of Mali, Tauna, and the Manoli, where we should not go to the Ministry of the Project. Professor John Kirchhoff, who has also had a collaboration agreement with the University of Mali, to offer the Ministry of the Ministry بالاسبت تاع ميثودولوجيا تاع لورين هيستري انك هو فتت قبل دار توك تاع لي كان سيشن اوف تاع تريننج فولونتيرا من هذا الترانسبورت هو تاع نشتغل للريكريشن الانتليجنتي والهديه مقولا تاع ترانسبورت تاع ريبريزنتانت السوق تاع كل ما عندنا اللي فات كل بي تاع التيتشي تاع فون اسوس تاع ليش نكونوا نستو نبداو نخدموا فوق الفايلز، نتكلموا فوق الوف كبار تاع فايلز، وما كاينش فايلز تاع كل فاتورة اللي دخلت مالتا، اللي كيكو ما كاينش دار بروجيكت سفورتونتامنت كانوا يبقوا في الستارت كيف، بالموت الموت بدينا باش دار البروجيكت وصلوا مال الاناليزي والتنظيف والسورتينغ اللي هي بزون، سنيورا مريم دبون وكل من هذا تاع الديبارتمنت تاع الورك، سيدي وكل اللي تعطينا اكسس on files in public works. Hadi Mati Ejjani Grazzaito, Hadi Mata Lakini Nazionali Lia Tiatu, Ombat for the project. Memoria, in particular, James Balda Kino Lia, the Senate and Administrator for that project. The first thing is of the government, no Mr. Mel Paul Mamo, Habib Anti Ktiye, the Trumpet in Afrikan, who is of Rally at the Kumu in the study of the Trinkom Sirna from Illu. و بحال دا السوجيت تريد نفكر عنا داو كان الباربا هاد السوجيت تي اخرى اللي يدير نخدمو فوقهم و نديرو من بينكم يكونو انفورماسيون ادوار داو في السوجيت تي فرزيك البروجيت تاع 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 كل تنظيمنا وكل تحت مود ديفرنتي اللي صاروا مع الجديد الفولونتاري تاع الوقت هو حاجه تبارك من المحاسب تاعو بايس يكون في الدنيا اللي عنده شور بحال دا دوكومنتات تاع كي في ناسيوناليتي وكل صار فولونتاري في دار كده ما هاش تشينجيز هو اللي تاع داك الشور كل اللي عنده ليه تنوع هنا تنفر الريبوزيتوري في داك الماتيريال اللي يجي صالح الغوارديا ونعطوا بعد لا يوم أن كيف استقلال يوم أكاديمي لا بيش شوال ما يواجه سنتي جنات حسنا تفاصيل ما تصير في رئيسيه صور صوبات اللي هي كيستا نوزا هو بتكلم عن تحريك أصلاً من تلك الأفكار اللي أجواءه تجوا اللينا أورت من إنجليش وصو فور دوكس وورد جيست هو ترى ااا أفضل من نمبر أوف أوف بيرسنس فروم أبروت ويت أس Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the support you are you are giving us through Facebook for sharing of information. A bit of information about an activity that we have today week. Today week we'll we'll or we'll be organizing a session here, which Richard is calling a drop-in session, whereby anyone who is interested in this topic can come over here. I think it's from three to six. Am I correct? From three to six here in the same place. And tell anyone who is, um, of course, this was an, an event by invitation tonight, but that event is open to the general public. Anyone who has photos and information can come over. So, do pass the word to other people. They can't come over, there's no need for appointments, and speak with Richard and with the other team, sharing the information. On the same day at 6, there will be basically this presentation or a similar version of this presentation for the general public. So the idea is to get the message across. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard. Again, maybe you want to add something to this. I just want to say, obviously, um, there's thanks to one person who uh, wasn't in the list, and that's the boss himself. Um, without...
We've had Dr. Fruge's assistance over the, um, the last couple of years, and especially last year when we were trying to sort of um, uh, get the, uh, the role of the project up and running. Um, happened to deal with some fairly lengthy messages from me because once I start writing an email uh, trying to get me to stop it, stop them. So um, he uh, hopefully sort of uh, got a, a cup of coffee and a sandwich to, uh, to, to read. But to say, without his help, um, we really wouldn't be here where we are today. So I would just like to personally thank you for all your assistance as well um, and going forward. So thank you very much, everybody. We invite you to stay with us, so if you can stay, we'll have some, some wine and uh, we'll continue the discussion over some wine. Thank you.